Hello there everybody, Sam Strains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to another review. Today it is one of my favourite southern steam locos from Hornby. I've actually got quite a stockpile of locomotives waiting to be reviewed at the moment, but I decided I would fast track today's loco and review it sooner rather than later because it is another Hornby Bargain loco. Now Hornby Bargains used to bring me joy, but the last couple of Bargain Hornby Steam locos I looked at both turned out to have faulty motors. Now this could be a coincidence, but I've still got a bad feeling about this one, so I'm gonna do it today, and then if it does turn out to be faulty, it won't be too late for me to get my money back. So what is the locomotive? Well, it is this, the Hornby Southern Railway N15, which is a 460 locomotive, dates back to the pre-grouping times, actually. But as you can see, this one is a post-grouping example, and it is in the Southern Railway Black. The N15 has been in Hornby's range since the 1970s. I think 1976 was the first N15 that Hornby released. But this is the modern one. This one is a 2007 model, or at least the tooling dates back to 2007. So it's a lot more modern. And today, the RRP for Hornby's N15 is £212.99. That is absolutely bonkers. The white Pullman train pack that I once purchased, I think cost me £130, and that included an N15 with a much more complex livery than this, and it also included three Pullman coaches. £212 gets you just the loco today. But, like I said, this was a Hornby bargain. I bought this from Hattons at the heavily reduced price of £114. And of course, at that price, I deem it reasonable to purchase. So, we're going to take a look at this thing today. Hopefully, it will be a lovely loco, and even more hopefully, it will work properly. Please do keep those fingers crossed. Okay, let's take a look. All right, so I haven't looked at one of these in yonks, so I'm really, really looking forward to this. Anyway, let me show you the end of the box, because the N15 I have is R3527. It is a Southern Railway 460 class N15 locomotive, and this one is named Camelot, and it's number 742. And that is one of the things I love about the N15, or the King Arthur class, as it's also known. All of the engines were named after different parts of the King Arthur legend, which is just a magical thing to name a class of steam locos after. I really do like that. Anyway, let me show you the end of the box. So the N15 was classified as a 5P. That gives you some idea of the power of these things, quite beastly. And then in the centre, we've got a good history here, actually, of the locos in real life. So if you want to pause and read that, feel free to. And then on the far end of the box, there is Hornby's drawings, which I always love to look at. And these are dated from 2007. So we can say that this model dates back around 15 years. OK, well, let's take a look at it then, shall we? Never had one of these in black before. Uh, I think the one I've got is Mansell Green. In fact, the one I've got from the 70s is Mansell Green as well. So, yeah, I'm not sure if I'll prefer the black, but it will certainly make a nice change. All right, let's pull this out. Hopefully the loco's in one piece for a change. That'd be nice. Come on, it's a tight fit. OK. So, we've got some paperwork. Let's take a quick look at that then. All right, class N15. Let's take a look inside. All right, so, yeah, it's the basics, really, isn't it? Lubrication, basic lubrication points. Location of accessories. We'll take a look at the accessory bag in a second. Connecting loco and tender, body removal, accessing the inside of the tender. That's where the speaker housing is and also the DCC socket should be. You've got close coupling options, putting the loco and tender back together, and yeah, there's the location of the 8-pin DCC socket. And then on the back, as usual, we've got a little bit about brake rods. Two different types of tender available with the Hornby N15. You've got the bogeyed tender and the standard six-wheeler. I think this is the bogeyed one, yeah, and my other N15 is also the bogeyed tender. I've never actually seen the Hornby N15 with the six-wheeler, but I guess they must have done it at some point. Okay, let's have a look at this then. Hopefully, this will be as good as I remember. The green one I've got is absolutely gorgeous, by the way. Really, really nice. It was one of my favourite locos for a very long time. Okay, wow, this is a surprise. Look at this. 
a, a few crew members. Now, are they very nicely moulded? No. Are they painted? No. But they showed up. They are here. And you don't often get this with a Hornby Loco. In fact, I'm a bit surprised to see them. So that is quite a bonus. Yeah, what a surprise. And then we've got an accessory bag here, which contains the brake rigging. Looks like just one set. So does the tender already have it fitted? I guess so. Coupling, that's probably for the front. You've got cylinder drain cocks, which are painted. A few steps, which I suppose will go around the front bogey and it will catch on them if you fit them, if you've got tight curves, which is why they're not fitted. And then you've got a bit of buffer beam detail, including some proper screw link couplings, which is a great bonus as well. So accessories, I think as far as accessories go, those are quite impressive. All right, let's see if the same's true for the Loco, hopefully. All right, Camelot, I love that name. A lovely name for a Loco. Okay, so there it is, yeah. And it's got a, I would say, a slightly plasticky finish. It's not terrible. You can see there's perhaps a little bit of a shine going on there, but it's not much to go on, is it? But yeah, I think for a plain black Loco, it looks okay. Right, very carefully then, because I'm pretty sure these are quite fragile. Let's lift it up. And there it is. And it's a handsome loco. Yeah, it, the N15 is a very, very handsome design, I think. And even in a plain black livery like this, the engines certainly don't lose that. Yeah, it's quite elegant, isn't it? Really quite elegant. And I'm not normally a massive fan of plain black locos, but I think the southern lettering and the southern numbers, they do make it pop a little bit, don't they? All right, so it looks okay. Yeah, the quality seems all right for now. I'll talk more about that in just a second. In terms of the weight, it feels about average. I would say it's not remarkably heavy, but also not remarkably light. I think Hornby's newer Lord Nelson class was noticeably much lighter than this. Having said that, the boiler and the running plate of the Loco, those are definitely just plastic, unfortunately. But I will check to see whether the running plate has warped or anything, hopefully not. The tender is noticeably very light and hopefully that won't cause problems because of course it's got bogies and a lot of wheels to take the weight. So each wheel won't actually have that much weight on it, um, but yeah, it should be okay hopefully. Right, so here comes a bit of background on this class in real life and then we'll take a much closer look at this model and some of its detail. The N15 was a two-cylinder pre-grouping steam locomotive originating from the LSWR. The class was designed by Robert Urey originally, but subsequent engineers made their mark on the fleet in the form of modifications and even a redesign. 74 examples were produced between 1918 and 1927 for hauling heavy express trains around the south of England, with speeds of up to 90 miles per hour. Besides the Lord Nelson class, they would be the largest 460 steam locos of the Southern Railway, of which they became a part following the grouping of 1923. Under the Southern Railway, Chief Mechanical Engineer Robert Mansell modified the design and had even more of them produced. These are included in the 74 examples I've just described. They were notable as becoming the first British steam locomotives to be fitted with smoke deflectors, which is a new fact to me, that's pretty cool. And then the class remained in service under British Railways until 1962, when the final withdrawals were made, and then every locomotive except for just one was sadly scrapped. The preserved example is number 3077, which is Sir Lamiel, and it was lucky to be preserved because it was originally decided that number 30453 King Arthur was to be preserved, but they changed their minds on that at the last minute. So there she is, Hornby's N15 Camelot, up close and personal for you. And I think this is a lovely model. I mean, look at it. It is really, really nice. I think it is a simple model in that obviously the livery here is definitely not very complex and the bodywork is fairly standard, the shape of it is unremarkable and there's not a huge amount in the way of separately fitted parts. Now this is not a criticism of course because all of that is perfectly prototypical and the model does seem to be perfectly realistic but it does beg the question as to how Hornby can possibly justify over £200 as the latest RRP for this loco. I think for that price you would certainly expect a few more features, particularly perhaps a die-cast boiler or a die-cast running plate, because generally speaking the Loco does look a bit too plasticky to cost quite that amount of money at the full price. 
Certainly though for £114, at this point I'm perfectly happy. So despite the plasticky nature of the locomotive, which has affected the finish I think, but we'll talk about that in a second, the weight itself is not too bad. So loco and tender weigh in at 354 grams, which is a little more than the Hornby B12, which did have a die cast boiler. And it's even more than the significantly larger, I think 2800 class. So the weight is definitely adequate. And also the running plate is perfectly straight. There is no warping, I checked, but here we go. So steel rule. Yeah, no visible warping on the running plate. So it's not as though the quality itself has suffered too much. But if we take a look at the boiler and the body itself, yeah, it does look quite plasticky, unfortunately. And quite a bit of the detailing is the same. The reverser rod there and also the pipework below it, clearly made of plastic. And uh, not only do they have a plasticky finish, but they're quite flimsy as well. Look at that reverser rod. Uh, so you're not going to want to catch those by mistake. What little decoration there is though is done very nicely so you've got the running number on the side of the cab there very nicely printed the camelot nameplate i'm trying to decide whether that is etched metal or not i don't think it is because you can kind of see the molding marks on the top so i think it's just a painted plastic piece doesn't look very good though let's be honest the quality of the paint on there is pretty low large metallic flex in the paint which actually makes it hard to read and then of course the buffer beams are nicely painted as well and while we're looking at those i might as well show you the metal sprung buffers and also don't forget there is a wealth of other detail that you can fit to the buffer beams if you like and that does include the screw link couplings which is a very nice inclusion above there you've got lamp irons which are separately fitted and nice and straight and that is a theme of this loco i've not noticed any wonky parts really and i've also not seen any glue marks it's quite unusual for Hornby. The smoke box door is quite complex. You can see there's lots of riveting going on there, lamp irons there as well, and quite a few separately fitted parts, such as the handrail, etc., etc. Nice smoke deflectors. I'm glad I've got one with the smoke deflectors because that's quite an important feature of the N15, especially if they were the first class of British Loco to use them. I think that's uh, worth having. We've got wire handrails across the boiler, which seem to be nice and neatly fitted. The wheels are good and realistic. These are just plastic molded wheels, I believe, with metal tires fitted. But as always, they are very well molded. And all of the coupling rods and the valve gear looks great as well. Yeah, no visible screws, nice and fine. I'm guessing the motion there will look absolutely lovely when this thing's up and running. Up on top in front of the cab, you have got separately fitted metal safety valves and they're quite detailed ones as well. So I guess that is a quality feature. Oh, there is a bit of glue there though. I only just noticed that, so. Yeah, slight glue mark. Uh, does that disappear with different lighting? Uh, not really, at least not if you're looking up close. And then you've got this pipework in front of the cab, which looks fragile, but obviously it's still intact. So that's a good sign. And then the front facing cab windows are quite interesting, aren't they? Some interesting shape to those, but they have got glazing in, which is lovely. Then underneath the cab, we've got separately fitted pipework. Again, quite plasticky looking, but certainly complex enough to look realistic. Then you've got handrails and cab doors fitted to the cab, as well as a tender floor plate, which also I think looks like it's made of metal, although it does seem to be fixed in that position. And then I think by far the best feature of the model is the cab interior. Absolutely wonderful. So many separately fitted parts. You've got the cream painted back wall and roof, separately fitted regulator rod, very intricately painted gauges, water gauges, other gauges, pressure gauges, all of them painted, separately fitted wheels, separately painted firebox door, very, very, very good cab. And my older N15 that I've got from Hornby also has a really good cab. So they've been doing cabs like this for a lot of years. And even today, this still stands up to modern Hornby releases and in many cases exceeds them. So I think the Loco does what it needs to. Again, I don't understand why it's so expensive now at the full price because it's not a complex Loco, but it does seem to have all the details and more that you'd want. And the quality is okay. It's not remarkable, but it's okay. And the build quality itself, the way the parts have been put together is much better than you would normally see from Hornby. So that's great. The tender is also an interesting one, obviously because it's got bogies. It's very, very rare that I review a tender with bogies like that. Uh, but yeah, it's all nicely done. As you can see, the body sits quite low on the bogies, so it's quite realistic. 
Again, a basic body, no riveting or anything as per the prototype, at least not on the side of the body. But up on top, you can see we have got some rivets near the water filler caps, which are all nicely molded. Separately fitted coal load, massive amount of coal. I mean, these locos must have done miles and miles to justify such large tenders. And then around the back, you've got another running number, 742. But then you've also got lamp irons fitted, fine looking vacuum pipe on the back, coupling hook, and also NEM coupling on the back of the tender, which appears to be fitted to the rear bogey, which hopefully will allow it to sort of move about as the loco takes curves, and then hopefully it won't cause derailments. Okay, so there you go. It's a lovely, lovely loco. I prefer the more complex liveries, bit of lining on the boiler, but that's just a personal thing. Obviously, this loco in real life in this livery wouldn't have had any of that, so if Hornby had included it, it would be completely wrong. But personally, I do prefer my Mansell Green, but still, that's not the loco we're reviewing today. And this one, for what it is, looks perfectly good. <sighs> okay, the part I'm not looking forward to, but we're going to have to do it and get it over with, the performance. We're going to see if this thing works and also take a look at the mechanism. So there she is, the Hornby N15 down onto the track and I've already filmed the first performance test and I will show you that in just a second. I won't spoil too much about that but I will tell you I still think this is a great loco so read between the lines if you'd like to. Next I went on and did my mechanical analysis and that's what I want to talk about next. So the good news is that this, surprisingly enough, is a completely different chassis from the S15. And that's a good thing because the motors in the Hornby S15 do seem to be quite prone to failure and this uses a different motor, so that can only be good. Next, the pickup situation is absolutely phenomenal. Because this Loco has tender pickups and also because of how many tender wheels this Loco has, it's got, what, seven pickups per rail? which is just tremendous. I mean, the reliability on the track should be incredible because of that. We have still got the old fashioned Hornby drawbar, but as you know, I don't have much of a problem with this. It's not exactly pretty, but it does work. And the original N15 from Hornby used to have a spring loaded contact between the two, uh, which was much, much less reliable than this is. So this is much preferred. The base keeper plate is held on with, I think it was four screws or something like that. Unfortunately, the base keeper is hardwired to the chassis, but there's plenty of wire connecting the two, so you can pull the base away from the loco enough to access the pickups and the axles for cleaning and maintenance. Obviously, it's not better, though, than spring-loaded contacts, because if the wire doesn't go back into the holes it came from properly, then you've got wire bunched up between the chassis and the base keeper, and that's not ideal. Spring-loaded contacts are better, but at least this loco is serviceable. You can also see we've got bearings on each of the axles, which is great, and it is the rear driving wheel that drives this loco. Here is the chassis. You can see it is a very, very basic bare bones chassis. It's got no lights, no extras, not even got a flywheel. All this is probably okay with the exception of the flywheel, but again, £212.99, that's excessive for such a simple model. Come on Hornby, get with the program. However, the motor, as you can see, this is the large Hornby motor that they put into all of their sort of larger steam locos. And well, all motors are capable of failing, of course. It's very rare, at least in my experience, that this type of motor fails. Much more reliable than the other types that we've seen trouble with. So that is very, very good indeed. And then as a final point of interest, this strange thing, you might be wondering what it is. Well, these locos used to have the DCC socket inside the loco, and that's where it used to go. Obviously now the socket is inside the tender because this is a more modern loco, but yeah, that's what that weird thing is. And then the gauge comes in at around 14.2 millimeters back to back on each driving wheel and also each tender wheel too, uh, which is about in line with other locos. So all of that checks out, but is the performance itself any good? Well, let me show you the clips. All right, it is the moment I have not been looking forward to. And in fact, because of how lovely this loco looks, I'm looking forward to it even less because it's gonna be even more disappointing if it doesn't work properly. But there's nothing I can do to put this off any longer. So does the N15 actually work? Hopefully it will actually work, but whether it works well is another thing. So forwards, power. All right, it's moving. So it's, it's crossed the first hurdle, it's running. 
and it seems like it's all right. There's 50% speed. Uh, it doesn't seem to be ludicrously slow or anything. It seems to be quite consistent, at least at the moment. All right, so it's it's looking good. That's a good sign. Um, I won't be 100% relaxed until this has run in completely. <laughs> But uh, I think there's a fair chance that this one will actually be okay, just based on that little run. Right, so how is the crawl at the slow speeds? Let's have a look. Bear in mind it's not been running yet, so this is fresh out of the box performance. I'm easing it up. All right. That's pretty good. That is pretty good. Uh, it's not dreadfully consistent or anything, but it is fairly slow. That's not bad at all backwards. It might get better after being run in. Usually I don't see much of a difference, but it's not unheard of. Yeah, that's not terrible. I mean, we've seen better, obviously, but I was really, I really did suspect that there would be something wrong with this based on the track record of recent Hornby bargains. And maybe I'm tempting fate massively by saying all this right now. I'll probably regret it in a moment, but at the moment, it seems to be perfectly okay. And that's awesome. It's a nice loco and a nice runner. Did something funny on that point, though. Let's watch that again. Hmm. Definitely a little bit of a, a jump there in the forwards direction. High speed. Hmm. Well, I'm not going to quibble too much about that. Right, next question. Does it complete a lap of the layout without derailing or causing mischief? Well, let's find the answer to that, shall we? Here we go, 50%. All right, that's 50%. Fairly speedy, I would have said, which makes the crawl even more impressive, but it's not a problem because obviously these locos were pretty fast in real life. 90 miles an hour was around the top speed for them. So uh, yeah, it makes sense that this is not a snail, but it seems to be fine. It's not slowing down on curbs, it's not derailing, it's not having any problems. That is very, very good news. So I'll leave this to run for 30 minutes in each direction and then we'll come back. And if all is still well, then I think I'll be able to give this a fairly good score. Right, I'll see you shortly. All right, here it comes and that is it. That is running in complete. And it's been absolutely fine. It's held the track perfectly. It's never derailed. Obviously, it's never cut out because of all those pickups. The one slightly annoying thing is the noise. Forwards makes that noise. Backwards makes that noise. Turns out what's making that noise is largely the pickups on the tender. Yeah, they make a squeaking noise. Now, there are things that you can do to improve that. You can adjust the pickups so they don't make such strong contact with the wheels. That can reduce the noise, but then that can reduce the reliability of the pickups as well, so I'm not bothered about that. You can also apply some conductive lubricant if you want to, and that should quiet it down. But again, the noise doesn't bother me too much that I'd want to faff around with that. But you've got options if the noise bothers you. Right, how is the slow speed then? Now that this Loco's had a good warm-up, let's have a look. It wasn't bad to start with, but there is room for improvement, I think. Yeah, I mean, that's not bad, is it? I mean, there's a bit of cogging there. Maybe it's not as smooth as other Locos, but overall, this is going to do the job, isn't it? Yeah, it's going to do the job. You can see the back wheel starts quite a bit before the others. But that is marvellous. Yeah, it's really, really good. I think it's a five star performer, folks. It was going to be four and a half, but I'm going to change it, I think, to five. Look how smooth that is. So it's that motor, isn't it? I mean, that motor is so much better then than the others. Now, it's more, it's not 100% smooth, but it's near as damn it, isn't it? Okay. Yeah, it's just gorgeous. It's one of those mesmerizing locos. Which is just fantastic to watch. Okay, that's very good. And the pulling power, by the way, is quite good as well. 0.45 Newtons, 
or around 27 coaches on straight and level track. That's not bad for a loco with a plastic running plate and a plastic body. And so, well, it's not really much of a, a heavy test really, but I've got five coaches. Let's go and see how the couplings work and let's make sure that the loco is actually capable of hauling a load. All right. Oh, uh, I was looking at the camera and not the loco. But anyway, you've seen the performance. You know that it's capable of a nice uh, gentle coupling, if that's what you want to do. Let's try a nice gentle start, though, to make up for it. Look at that for a crawl. Yeah, and all the coaches are moving now. Okay, let's accelerate it gently, not too fast. Let's go for about 35 on the controller. Yeah, real good, real good. Okay, and on the middle line, I've talked a lot about it today, so let's finally have it. It is the other N15 that I've got from Hornby. I've had this for several years. I have to admit, I prefer the livery on this, but in terms of its performance, the front bogey is prone to jumping off the track for some reason, and after all these years, I've never been able to solve it. Well, this new one from Hornby is not doing that. I was worried that it might. It doesn't. So, in that sense, the new one is even an improvement over the old one, which is really something. And then on the inside line, just out of interest, I've decided to run the old Hornby N15, which is Sir Dinadan. They didn't really make much of this tooling, did they? I mean, Sir Dinadan is the only one I can remember seeing. If they did any others besides that, comment down below, but they, I don't think they did many. And it's a lovely runner as well. Look at that. Not a bad control, really, for 1976. Right, the new one's made it round anyway, so let's watch it for a lap and let's see how it handles itself with coaches. All right, let's keep an eye on it around that curve, see if it slows down. Yeah, maybe very, very slightly. But nothing compared to some locos, and I am running it at 35, which is pretty rough <laughs> on analogue. And yeah, it's doing it without any problems at all. So performance wise, it's wonderful. It is really, really good. So much better than expected and far from the faulty loco that I was so worried about receiving in this case. But no, I really did get a bargain this time and this loco doesn't need a new motor. It doesn't need to be returned. It's 100% fit for purpose, which is just excellent. So really, really happy with that. What a good bargain. And also, see which other locos you can spot in these sidings. I've got other 460s. If you can see an odd one out, then do comment down below and explain why it's an odd one out. Let's have some ratings then for Hornby's still very impressive N15 locomotive. The level of detail I've given four star. Now overall, the level of detail is wonderful. The quality of the cab detailing is insane. We got crew included, don't forget, sprung buffers, couplings included, plenty of other details. It does lose one star though for the plasticky finish, which I think is better on more modern locos. And also some of the plastic components, such as the reverser, which doesn't look very convincing, and also the nameplate, which isn't great. But other than that, yeah, wonderful detail. Performance then, funnily enough, this was not a five star performer when I started running it, but this time it does seem as though running in has done the trick because it is now crawling as a five star performer should. It's very nice and smooth and reliable around the track, never a derailment, no problems with the coupling or anything like that. It's just a spot on performer now, so it's got to be, I think, five star. The pulling power, amazing. 27 coaches or 0.45 newtons. That is more than a Hornby 9F, a Merchant Navy, even more than an A2-2. It's really good. That's very, very impressive for a loco that doesn't have very much die cast on it, although the chassis is fairly heavy, mind you. Okay, mechanism, again, I've given it four star. The only thing I would change about this is the lack of the flywheel. I think one of those would be good, and I would also make it a little bit easier to access for servicing, but those are not major criticisms, really, because besides that, the mechanism is top notch. So you've got proper bearings, tons of pickups, a really decent quality motor, and a fairly accessible mechanism for maintenance and DCC fitting and whatever else. Mechanism, not a problem. The quality then, again, four star, an absolute minimum of visible glue, no details dropping off it, nothing warped or put together wrong. The only thing I would fault again is the plasticiness of the model, a die cast running plate, a die cast body, that would have brought us better quality. 
it would have brought a better finish and it would also have better justified the really high price. And that brings us on to value for money. So I do think the RRP of £212.99 is just unrepresentative of this model. It's very simple as models go, there's not really that much to it, so I cannot understand for the life of me why it would need to be that expensive. So at that price I would give it two star on value because nonetheless it is still a decent model for the money. However, for what I paid £114, this model hits the spot. Yes, it's fairly simple, but that's very much reflected in the price. So I've split the difference and given it three and a half star on value. At the right price, this is a very, very decent purchase. Overall then, that is 8.33 out of 10. Let's put that into the logbook, and that's pretty good. Sixth place above the Hornby L1 and below the Hornby Hush Hush. <laughs> that's not bad for a 15-year-old design. Well folks, thank you very, very much for joining me for yet another review. Yeah, this is, this is the kind of review that I love to do because it was a good price, it's a good loco, it's a good performer, there's just there's nothing to moan about. And I do a lot of moaning, that's true, but I don't necessarily enjoy moaning. And so to find a loco that basically ticks all of the boxes without any problems is definitely a real joy to find. So. And I hope you enjoyed that as well, yeah, because it does get tiring, doesn't it, finding all these issues. But, you know, if, they, if the issues are there, I'm always going to talk about them because what good is a review if you only focus on the positive? Answer, no damn good at all. But this, this time there, there was genuinely a good reason to be very positive, and that's very good to see. So, Hornby, please bring back the N15. It's a great loco. It seems as though it's possible to produce this loco to a high standard, and they certainly have. So no complaints at all. So I hope you've enjoyed that as much as I did. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you very soon for some more videos. All right, cheers, everybody.